Hey, hey y'all and welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you what we use for our group subjects this past school year and letting you know what worked for us and maybe even what didn't work for us. Today's video is gonna be the first in a series of me sharing what we used this past school year. I've got lots of fun things planned, talking about new curriculum and new plans and new things that are happening, but I also think it's important to hear what we used and how it worked for us. I know what works or doesn't work for one family isn't necessarily going to be the same for another family, but at the same time, I think it's important to hear from a kind of been there, done that perspective, and then you can start to form your own opinions. So that's what I'm doing today, and we're starting with group subjects. This particular video is also part of a collab hosted by Katie at Life in the Mundane, and there's a couple other YouTube mamas that are participating as well, and all that information is going to be down in the description box for you, but we're going to be sharing how we homeschool multiple kiddos. So I thought that this would be a great time to start with what we used as group subjects this past year. If you're new around here, my name is Tiffany. This is our small town life. We're so happy to have you here. I am a homeschooling mama to three kiddos with one on the way this past year, or technically it's still this school year. We're finishing it up right now. I've got about a month left, but uh, I am homeschooling a fifth grader, a third grader, and a kindergartner. Today's video is going to talk about what we used for our subjects that we sat down and did all together. So it's going to be Bible, science, history, and then there's going to be a couple other little things here and there that I'll add in and we'll talk about too. And then in upcoming videos, probably over this week, I'm going to do um, a dedicated video to my fifth grader, my third grader, and my kindergartner, letting you know exactly what they used for their individual subjects this year as well. So be on the lookout for all of that. Today we're talking group subjects. I'm sitting in what is currently our homeschool room. It's starting to look a little disheveled. You know, that happens towards the end of the school year, but I thought it would be nice to just sit here so I can pull things right off the shelf and we can talk about it. So I'm going to go ahead, get what we used for Bible, and we'll start there. I've got to find it. Of course, it's not here where it's supposed to be. Okay, I had to go find it because they had pulled it out and had used it this morning and it was still sitting on the desk. So for Bible, okay, so this is how our day usually works since we're talking about how to homeschool multiple kiddos. So first thing in the morning, my kids get up, eat breakfast, and about 9.30ish, we sit down to start school and we do our group subjects first. Now, what I'm going to show you, we do not do, and this is going to go for the things when I do my videos on my individual children as well. I'm going to show you everything, but we did not necessarily do everything every single day. So, we always did Bible, and then we'll either do history or science, and then we usually always do some form of math, some form of language, arts, and then work in other things here and there as well. So, Every day we start with Bible, and we always start with our group subjects first. We go through that, and then they kind of break off and do their individual things. Doing it that way, we are usually done by lunchtime, and that's one thing that my kids really, really love coming from public school to homeschooling. They have loved being able to just sit down, do everything that we need to do, and then have the rest of the day to play but when they're outside playing or they're doing art or they're playing with Play-Doh or they're listening to music or reading their own individual books and silent reading, when they're doing all those things, they're still doing school. <laughs> but they've sat down and got all of their school work done, and so it doesn't feel that way. Usually we are done with school work by lunchtime. Now, with all of that said, the first thing that we always start our day with is Bible, and we have used this more than words from master books and the way this is set up it's set up for the child to actually write inside the book draw the pictures inside the book those kinds of things but instead of doing that we've got one book and then the kids have let me just pull one out and show you they have bible journals and inside their bible journals this is where they do their copy work or draw their pictures those kinds of things so we can all share one book 
and then they do their individual work inside of their Bible journal. This usually takes us about 10 minutes a day, maybe 15 if we go a little more in depth, but that is what we always start our day with from my kindergartner all the way to my fifth grader. We sit down and do this together. The next thing that I've pulled out to show you is history, and for history, we've been using our Star Spangled Story from Knotgrass. Knotgrass did send me this curriculum for us to try out and share what we thought about it. Regardless, I will always tell you what I think and what I feel about it in complete truth 100%. Y'all know that? And let me just tell you, this is probably our favorite thing that we do. Of everything that we have, of all the curriculums, of all the subjects, this is probably our absolute favorite. And if you buy the bundle, what it comes with is two books. So it's a part one and a part two. And the reason it's set up this way is just so you don't have one big, huge, thick book that's a little daunting or overwhelming. And y'all, the lessons, they take up about five or six pages, but it's only because there's so many beautiful pictures in here and things to look at. And I love that. I absolutely love that about it. So the way we do this, okay, let me get back to what all comes with it. You've got the two books. You have a timeline. And this is my kind of timeline, y'all. I'm not the mama or the teacher who wants to take up a whole wall and constantly add to a timeline. I understand the importance of a timeline and teaching it to our children. But this right here is my kind. Okay, so they can open up the book find where we're at, see things that came before and after, and then you just put the book back up. So it comes with that. At the end of each lesson, there's three questions that you ask your kids just to see if they retained the information. And it comes with a little answer guide to help you out there. It also comes with this book of rhythms and rhymes. And it has different uh, songs and things in here. It comes with a CD. And throughout the lessons, there'll be times where it tells you to listen to a certain song or something like that. And so it comes with that. And then it comes with a student workbook. And what I did was just bought two extra student workbooks for my kiddos. And so the way we do this, it usually takes us about 20 to 25 minutes when we do this. And while I'm reading the lesson, they open up their workbook. There are coloring pages in there things to draw, things to write. And the reason why it works out so well for everybody to sit down and do this together, I know that history and science, that's kind of a um, touchy or controversial topic when it comes to should you include that in a kindergartner's curriculum. We're doing it anyway. He enjoys sitting down and doing it with us. And the way this is set up, it works for everybody. So even on the days where my older two are writing paragraphs, it may say write a paragraph or draw a picture. So he can draw a picture, they can write a paragraph, or the older ones can do both the picture and the paragraph. It just works out well to use this for everybody and they enjoy it. They absolutely love sitting down and doing this. The only thing that my kindergartner needs a little extra help with is at the end of a unit, there will be um, like a review where you've got to match so-and-so said this or so-and-so did this. And he's actually retaining a lot more information than I expected him to. He just needs help reading the pages, but this works out really, really well for us, and we've enjoyed it for history. We actually started this about eight weeks into the school year for various reasons, this and the science, and we only do it about twice a week. Like I said, we don't do everything every single day. So we have, we're just about finished with part one and so we're actually going to take this over into next school year because we love it so much and just start on book two next year. All right, the next thing I've taken off the shelf here to show you is science. And we have been doing Apologia Astronomy, and we have really enjoyed this as well. Again, we do it about two times a week. We started it about eight weeks into the school year, so we're about halfway through this book. I do plan to use it some next year, but I'm going to incorporate some other things as well. What I have discovered is we really enjoy being able to change topics about every six to eight weeks. So doing units and, you know, maybe doing 
six to eight weeks on mammals and six to eight weeks on uh, plants and six to eight weeks on astronomy, those kinds of things. And the way this is set up is a full year of astronomy. I've also heard mixed reviews on Apologia, but I really think it depends on the topic that you choose. We have thoroughly enjoyed the astronomy. What I did was I got the book and I got the bundle that came with one of the notebooking journals. And then I just got two more journals for my other two kiddos. So we share a book. They all have their own journal. And this actually can come with a junior journal. So my kindergartner uses the junior journal. It's pretty much the same activities and things. Sometimes his are just simplified a little bit. Only thing that he doesn't do in this book is it still has cursive copy work and he's not there. <laughs> he's not there. So he doesn't do that, but pretty much everything else he can do that's in this junior journal. Again, on the days that we do this, it takes us about 25 minutes. If there is a project or an experiment to do, sometimes it takes us up to about an hour. But that's another thing I love about this. There's not a whole lot of planning that you have to put into it. Even when we get to a project or an experiment, I usually have everything that I need. They're simple, they're fun, and the kids learn a lot from them, but it's usually things that I already have. Things that I don't have to go out and buy or search for or do a whole lot of planning for. I usually already have them around the house. So that's what we used for science this year. Again, we will be using this some next year, but I think we're going to incorporate some other things as well just to change it up a little bit. Once we get to the end of our group subjects for the morning, the last thing that we all do together is a read aloud. And we've not done as many books this year as I had hoped and had planned. When I found out I was pregnant back in October, I was so sick. For about 18 weeks, I was very, very sick. And we did not do our read alouds during that time as much as I would have liked to. So we have finished Little House on the Prairie, we have finished Charlotte's Web, and we are currently reading through On the Banks of Plum Creek. And we just get all of our read aloud books from the library, but I do have big hopes for next year and doing more read alouds. We absolutely love it. We sit down and I read a chapter or the older two and I will sit down and read a page at a time and Huddy listens. And I think books and just sitting down and reading is very important. And so we have enjoyed doing that. And that's what we do to end kind of our group time together in the mornings. The next two things that I'm going to show you are not necessarily things we do as a group, but they're things that multiple kiddos use. So I wanted to share them with you. So what we do is after we finish our group subjects in the morning, they all kind of split off and do their own things for language, math, whatever else they have going on during the day. And the older two can do a lot of that on their own. They need my help every once in a while. And I can kind of sit down and give more attention to my kindergartner. Something that my older two have used this year is typing one from The Good and the Beautiful. And originally my plans were for them to finish this whole book the first semester and then do typing two the second semester. But as we got going, I realized that they just absolutely loved being able to sit down, do one lesson, get it done, mark it off their list. It takes them maybe five to 10 minutes to do it. And it's just a sense of accomplishment to mark it off, you know? So I didn't want to push it. I didn't want to make them do it every single day. I didn't want to make them do three or four lessons a day. They sit down, they do one lesson. And just doing that, I have seen so much improvement in their posture at the computer, their hand placement, their typing speed. Now they're not typing 70 words a minute. <laughs> They don't need to, but they are doing so much better with their typing, just doing one lesson at a time, about three times a week, and we're right at the end of the school year. They're going to finish this book up right at the end of the school year, and then we will probably go on into typing two next year because we have really, really enjoyed this. They share one book. Now, it does have spots in here where you can take these stickers and mark off things that you've done and all of that. My kiddos don't do that. They just share this book. They have a running Word document on the computer that they open up, type their lesson for the day, and save it. The next time, they just pull it back up and add to it. And that's how we have made this work for both of my older two kids, my third grader and my fifth grader.
And then this last thing that I want to show you, it needs to be cleaned off. Somebody didn't, didn't clean it off the last time they used it real well. But this actually came from another friend here on YouTube. Her channel is Mama Cat's Home. She doesn't live too, too far from us, just a couple of hours. And she met us and brought us all kinds of great homeschooling stuff. And this was in there. And it's a laminated um, manuscript. So we got print and cursive. And Hudson, my kindergartner, about once a week or so, will sit down with a dry erase marker and practice tracing his uh, print. And then the older two sit down and work on their cursive. We have used this so much. As simple as it may seem, I highly recommend doing something like this. They love using dry erase markers. And they sit down and their handwriting has improved so much just by the repetitiveness of tracing the letters. And that's everything that we have used for our group subjects and group curriculum, family curriculum, family subjects, whatever you want to call it, this past school year. Hopefully you found that information helpful. Don't forget that I'm going to be doing videos coming up very soon, including what I've used for individual subjects for my fifth grader, my third grader, and my kindergartner. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We love you guys and we will see you next time. Bye y'all.